Hey everybody, this is So Heidi, and this tutorial is going to go through creating pleats using a few cool techniques as well as clipping masks to clip out portions of the pleats that you don't want to see. So let's get started. What I've got here to start with is I've got this outer layer of the skirt and then this under layer. Right now it's on top, but I've got it um, on top just so we can visibly see. Uh, what we're working on and then we'll send it to the back in the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the pleat lines and the quickest way to do that is with a dashed line. So I just draw a path about halfway through, it might be a little bit high so we'll bring this down a little bit, about halfway through from the top to the bottom of my section that I want pleats to go to and I'll put dashed line here over my strokes panel and I'm going to adjust the weight. Now with the shift key within the uh, field here, I can increase my stroke weight much more quickly. So I need this to be long enough that it extends above and below. Now that doesn't look super realistic because the pleat lines would actually come in more at an angle, so we'll fix that in a second. The one thing I do want to note is I was playing with this earlier, so my dashed line settings here are already set up quite good, but if yours is coming in looking something like this, um, you will probably want to adjust it. So I know that I need a 0.25 dash and a 12 point gap actually looks pretty good for my demonstration here. So the next thing I want to do is I want to curve this path so that the pleat lines actually come up in an angle as they would realistically. I'm going to use a cool new tool. This is available only in Illustrator CC 18.1 so you must be updated to that version um, for this tool to be available. It's hiding under the pen tool. It's called the anchor point tool. We'll grab that and we'll hover over our path and we'll just click and drag down and this allows us to curve the path. Now I'm going to curve it until it about matches the same curvature as my hem and what that's going to do is it's then going to make my lines go at the correct angle that they need. Now some funky things happen at the end because these paths, gets, paths get really jammed up here but don't worry about that because we're not going to see that at the end. So I'm going to move this up a little bit because I want to make sure that the pleat lines disappear right up into the top and they run all the way down to the bottom. So you just got to get that adjusted accordingly. So a curved line with the dashed, uh, a curved path running horizontal and a dashed line applied with the stroke weight um, that's large enough to fill up the whole section you need pleats in. Now I've got this panel here that shows the pleated portion and I'm going to use that as my clipping mask. So that needs to be in front. Anytime you're masking artwork, the clipping mask needs to be in front and the object that you want to clip is going to be underneath. So I want to mask out everything that is outside of this object here, which is ultimately going to be my mask. So I take my mask and I choose Object, Arrange, Bring to Front. And then I will select my path here that is the dashed lines. I'm going to choose Object, Clipping Mask, Make. And what that's going to do is it masks out everything that is outside of the mask area, which is that shape I had drawn earlier. Now this isn't looking very realistic. We would have some more like jagged zigzag lines at the bottom that would emulate the pleats at the bottom. So let's go ahead and add that now. You can come back and use the masked shape as an actual object within um, to show an outline or a fill color. By default, when you use something as a clipping mask, it will apply no stroke and no fill to it. You can always come back later and change it back to have a stroke or a fill. So you can use the, you can manipulate the artwork within a clipping mask similar to how you work within isolation mode when objects are grouped. So you can just double click to get inside and then you have the ability to access the mask and the dashed line that emulates the pleat lines. So we'll go ahead and we'll select our mask and I'm going to give it a black stroke so with my stroke forward over here I'm going to click this black color on my swatches panel and now I've got a stroke. Now the next thing I want to do is I still want that mask selected and I want to emulate the zigzag that you would have along the bottom. So I'm going to come up to effect, distort and transform and choose zigzag. Now within here, depending on how large you've drawn your sketch, you might have to do some settings a little bit differently than the ones I'm showing you. But let's turn the preview on. And we need more ridges per segment. And really just going to pay attention to the bottom because the side and the top portions are going to be hidden behind the rest of my sketch. So I'm going to increase this until the pleats along the bottom 
look like they hit at a pretty good spot. And that looks pretty good right there. And I can change the size. Let's see, how about point 0.1? I think that looks good. So it just changes the height of the pleats. You can see they can get taller and shorter. I think point 0.1 looks good and about 29 at the size I have my sketch right now. So I choose OK. And now the zigzag effect that I've applied to my path is what's actually masking out the pleat lines. So I can double click to get out of that and then I'll just select this object and I choose object arrange send to back to hide that all behind the rest of my skirt and now I've got really nice pleated edge my pleat lines run up at an angle as they would realistically and they're all controlled by this curved path with a dashed line applied to it instead of individual lines so I can very easily change the dash size of these if I need to if I want them to look a little bit thicker I think 0.25 looks pretty good. So there you go, a cool couple cool tricks to create pleats and working with clipping masks within Illustrator. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.